Let's look at the noise spectrum. Broadband noise, as its name implies, exists across the entire band. It's thermal noise and is often called white noise or Johnson Nyquist noise. 1 over F noise has a 10 dB per decade slope. It's commonly called flicker noise, but it's also called pink noise, low frequency noise, and excess noise. The noise spectrum is split into two basic regions the 1 over F region and the white noise region. The place on the noise floor where they intersect is called the flicker corner. There is also burst noise, which is associated with semiconductor defects. It's also called popcorn noise because at audio frequencies, it sounds like popcorn popping. It's also called red noise and random telegraph signals. With today's high standards used in semiconductor manufacturing, burst noise pretty much a thing of the past. Op-amp data sheets will sometimes have an oscilloscope waveform of the flicker noise. It's a 10 second sweep, which corresponds to a tenth of a hertz. In theory, 1 over F noise would be infinite at DC, but that would correspond to infinite time, which is a way for me to wrap my head around that concept and not worry about it. 0.1 hertz measurement encompasses the dominant part of the 1 over F spectrum. Johnson or Nyquist noise is thermal noise. Thermal noise is just part of the universe. You are likely aware of thermal noise, but it warrants being reviewed here as it is undeniably existent in all electronic systems. While quantum effects are known at very high frequencies and at very low temperatures involving Planck's constant, they are not mathematically significant in the products we deal with. It's basically the mean available noise power from a resistor at a specific temperature. As the temperature of the resistor increases, the kinetic energy of its electrons increases and more power becomes available. Thermal noise is broadband and virtually flat with frequency, and because of that, it's also called F to the zero power noise. It's based on Boltzmann's constant which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules per degree Kelvin. In a 1928 paper, Nyquist used the equal partition law of Boltzmann and Maxwell to state that the noise power density H is KT, where K is Boltzmann's constant and T is temperature. Since a joule is a watt second, the units of noise power density is watts per hertz. The noise power is KTB, where B is the bandwidth in hertz. The concept is based on maximum power transfer from the noisy resistor RN to a matched load RL. Since they are matched, we can say R equals RN equals RL. The power in the load is half the noise voltage squared over R. Manipulating that gives us VN squared over 4R. The power in the noise resistor equals the power in the load, so we can set the result equal to KTB. Then solving for VN equals the square root of 4 KTRB. Now you know where the 4 came from. The noise specs are confusing to folks that have not dealt with noise analysis before. How did that square root hertz get in the denominator? Here's the input voltage noise density of the LM358. It's 40 nanovolts per square root hertz. Note, that's a voltage density. The goal is to determine the RMS voltage of our application within a specific bandwidth. We first assume the voltage density is flat across the band. For a density E broadband is the voltage noise divided by the bandwidth B. We just need to simplify to have only one occurrence of bandwidth. We then multiply the spec voltage density by the square root of the system bandwidth, and the square root hertz cancels. This results in 12.65 microvolts RMS. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.